Okay. Hello out there. This is uh, Will Dennis, editor of uh, Undiscovered Country, and we are here to record the um, San Diego Comic-Con Virtual Undiscovered Country panel. Sadly, we can't all be together, as everyone knows, because of COVID, but uh, mm -hmm. we've got the uh, three principal creators of this book, and uh, we're going to have a little talk today about you know, what we've been doing, how we've been putting it together, and what you can look forward to in the future. So I have... Uh, Writer Scott Snyder. Hello, Scott. Hey. I have co-writer Charles Soul. Hey. And uh, artist Giuseppe Comancoli, affectionately known as Camo. Hey guys. Woo. Everybody, I'm I'm in Connecticut at the moment. Camo's in Italy. Where where Scott and Charles? Where are you guys at? Uh, I'm in upstate New York. I'm in the Hudson Valley, which is pretty beautiful today, which is great. Yep, and I'm out in uh, about two hours out of the city on the north shore of Long Island. So yeah, we're all tri-state. This is this is yeah, I guess so. 2020. This this is how we do it. I've got my undiscovered country shirt on, as you can see, the red, white, and blue. So you know, sort of. Yeah, my Graceland, red, white, and blue. <laughs> Staying up. Uh, mine is uh, Powell's Books to support a great bookstore out in Portland. Exactly. Good yeah. Stuff. Uh, blue, white, and there's some red underneath, but uh, and that know. looks like a, that looks like a cowboy shirt a little bit, kind of, yeah, which, that, is, which is pretty appropriate. It has that kind of Levi's feel. You're there. Yeah, that's very that works. That works. I forgot to a bandana. I was saying that I, from now on, my whole look's going to be just wearing a bandana all the time, like the cowboy I always wanted to be. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so I never forget because you hate to leave the house and you don't have your mask and you're just like, oh. So well, we should just have a destiny man mask when we go out and that's it. like the giant helmet and the horns <laughs> walk around like that in shorts all summer. It's like we're, we're that's the next round of merchandise. All the time. Right. We'll get to the merch. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so we would have had a panel, we hope at San Diego and talk to you about this book and how things are going. Um, we're right on the eve of the first trade paperback coming out, which comes out um, July 8th. Uh, in comic shops and also like a Barnes and Noble exclusive that we're doing. Uh, yeah. we're gonna have, you know, there, uh, these are my comps. I don't know if that's reversed or not, but this is the original cover and this is the Barnes and Noble cover. They're, they're beautiful. I just got them over the weekend. They're gorgeous. They're like really, really cool. So beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Look very shiny. But yeah, yeah, they are. Oh, good. Yeah. You know, you can never remember. Like I always see those things and it's surprising to me. I'm like, what, which paper did we pick? Which cover stock did we pick? <laughs> Here, that's it. Um, <laughs> So yeah, we'll put some of those up in a minute. I can start sharing a screen and all that kind of stuff, hopefully uh, without making this, screwing this up too bad. Um, but I mean, some people have heard, and if you've been reading the series, obviously you guys do these really cool, um, you know, extra material letters and things like that every month. And you kind of explain the origins and stuff. But for people who haven't, or people who need a little refresher, I mean, the, the origin story of this book is pretty interesting. So um, maybe, I, I, you know, if you guys want to talk a little about how you got together on it, where the ideas came from, a lot of the research you did, I think that's all pretty interesting to people. Go sure. On. Kick yeah, that back and forth. Research, yeah, you, yeah, just we'll kick it back and forth. Right. Sure. Okay. Well, first, like, just as a kind of general thing, let us just say thank you so much to everybody out there watching this. I mean, the book was a dream project for a long time. And, and this, we're, this team, you know, we're all friends a long time and have worked together on different things. And so to get to do a book this comprehensive and robust and personal was something that we had always hoped to do. And the fact that it's become the success that it has is really not, you know, that, that's nothing you think about going in. We were just trying to make something that we loved and would pick up. So the fact that it's, you know, you guys have been so supportive and so vocal about it and gotten so into it. It really means the world. So thank you from everybody on the team uh, for making this book something that we're, we can now do for quite a long time. Um, and in terms of the inception, I would just start by saying, you know, Charles and I have been friends for almost 10 years, I guess, you know, we'll yeah. want to go back even further. And uh, it really came from uh, Charles and I trying to spend time together at different conventions, you know, as, a, as friends, you know, these, these conventions can be so uh, uh, sort of work oriented and pressure filled and all of that. We always tried to do something where we would explore the place uh, that the convention was at by going running together, going out and trying to see stuff off the beaten path and getting away. And over that period, we started talking about, and we have a lot of similar interests. We both love American history, Americana, 
you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that have kind of become the primordial DNA of the book. And we kept talking about wanting to do a big adventure series together, something that would allow us to kind of reconnect to some of that Saturday morning cartoon fun of, you know, exploring land, the lost land, like land of the lost or, or uh, that kind of a adventure series. And yet at the same time, something that was grounded in the zeitgeist and, and meant something to us about what was happening. Because as parents as well, we talk a lot about, you know, the state of things and how in, in many ways, like we're, we're very scared for the future and hopeful in different ways. So that was kind of the, I guess the like the primordial soup of where it came from, right, Charles? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's right. That's, that's the genesis of it. And then it, it sort of, um, it built from there to to really focus on, as Scott mentioned, some of the things that we both really love about America and kind of the the underlying mechanics of the country and the underlying history of the country. Because there's a lot that goes into this this nation that three of the four of us are in right now, um, and even even the way that somebody like Kamo from overseas perceives the country. Like America is this is this this thing that is larger than the land that it's that it's built on. Um, and we've been seeing a lot of that just in sort of what's been happening in the world and, and the country in the last six months or so, uh, for sure. So, so we wanted to, to make something, create something that would, that would try to encapsulate and try to explore all of those ideas. Like, what is America? What is the American dream? How is this going to work? And um, we, we settled on this idea of, of America sealing its borders, um, which, which was something that was, was already kind of in the news. But we, we took it to an extreme and said the idea that the idea was that America would shut itself off completely from the rest of the world uh, for, for an indefinite period of time. No communication, no trade, um, nothing. Just it wouldn't exist on the world stage anymore. And so that opened two questions up. What happens to the rest of the world in the absolute United States? And what happens within the United States during that time period? And so we thought those were both really interesting questions to explore. And it went from there to a you know, the craziest, wildest place we could think of, which is like, okay, it's been 30 years, United States has been a black box, and an expedition goes in from outside to see what it is. And that was the log line that, that really guided us through developing the series. Um, and and the, the fun thing was that during part of the development, there's this guy that, that, that Scott knew before I did, he, he lives near him, and um, out in, in Long Island, um, who is somebody who is like a retired CIA person. And, and he's, you know, retired in quotes. And so he, he told us about this concept called Fortress America, which was basically a, a real world wargaming of what it would be like to seal the United States off from the rest of the world. And, and to know that a plan actually existed and that, that there were like legitimate underpinnings to the idea that we had just kind of come up with this craziness, uh, that is when I think it sort of went to the moon, so to speak, because we were able to look at a lot of the actual planning uh, or think about the actual planning for how it would be done, and then take it to a really fantastical place, which is what, mm -hmm. we, which is what we have in the book. So, yeah. so that's that's yeah. kind of the next step of what we did, and you know, then we okay. started writing. Process take for this kind of thing. I mean, are you guys kicking this back and forth for years, or you yeah? Know? I mean, it was it was quite a while, right? I it mean, it was. was it was over a year at least when we came up mm -hmm. with the the log line, you know, that we were so excited about. Just that idea that Charles said, like. America has become this black box, you know, and nobody knows what's happened here for 30 years and a team is invited in and that's the start. It yeah. became, are we going to write it in a way, there was a period where we were going to write it uh, separately, where it would be two yeah, teams. Two expeditions. One team came in from one side and one team came in from the other and I would write one and Charles right. would write the other. And right. then we went through an iteration where it was uh, a little bit more uh, sort of a slow burn. So we really tried to figure out the best way of the best way, uh, the kind of the best format for exploring the idea in a way that would allow it to be um, really inviting and fun and inclusive. And then at the same time, have this kind of sublimated, I think, uh, undercurrent about being sort of uh, resonant with regard to the things that are going on in the world and also things that are personal to us about why we think America is sort of special in its, in its ideas or its founding, its founding kind of, you know, uh, uh, principles and yet at the same time completely flawed and completely, you know, corrupt mm -hmm. in other ways as well. So um, it was that and we settled on a format and then one of the things that we were really excited about too, Charlie and Kamo might be free for it uh -huh. because, you know, they, I got to work with him very briefly on All-Star Batman, but Charles worked with him for a long time on uh, Darth Vader. Uh, and uh, we knew he'd be perfect for the series because of his style as well, which is 
at once like I think you know extremely emotional and character driven you know he's character driven and yet at the same time he's capable of this wildly imaginative big over the top kind of epic storytelling so it was going to be like oh this is a perfect fit you know and then, right yeah that way. That's what I was just going to say, is that it, it all really took off when, like many comics do, when the artist gets involved. So I was going to, like, Kamal, what did you think when we, when we, well, I think I reached out to you and, like, you know, so how, like, what were your thoughts as this was all starting? I mean, like, yeah, we had worked together for uh, almost, like, a year and a half or something more. Like, yeah, more, Darth maybe. Vader, on, the, on Darth Vader book, we did, like, 25 issues in less than two years, I think. And yeah. we had a lot of fun. And yeah, as, Char as uh, Scott said, we had worked together on Most of Batman and fan of both writers. So yeah, I think it was uh, Charles who approached me and asked me, you know, when we reached the end of the Darth Vader collaboration, like, what about doing a book with me and Scott? And I was like, I'm all ears. I mean, uh, there was, uh, I mean, that invitation to, to join the Undiscovered uh, Country bandwagon came at the right time, at the right moment for me. Uh, because like, I I've been doing this, uh, well, was it like almost 20 years, like when we worked together on Hellblazer, I think, mm -hmm. almost 20 years ago. I started out at Vertigo in 2000 uh, with uh, Swamp Thing for it with Brian K. Vaughan, but I've been doing mostly, you know, um, Marvel and DC things, which I love and I still and I still love doing it, but it was like quite some time that I wanted to try something more personal, like a, like a personal project and like this Undiscovered Country pitch uh, came, you know, graciously and, and I, I loved it. and. Uh, as Scott said, like I, I love building, I love doing world building, and I love also, you know, the more intimate, you know, uh, interaction with characters. So, like everything from the high concept to the uh, few um, details that they gave me, you know, about the stuff that I would have ended up drawing, like decided me that I was like sold on the book, and I'm so happy that I, you know, decided to join the, the mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's weird how that happens that, you know, you might find yourself have the time or it's just all the forces seem to align. I have that so many times in all the books I've worked on over the years, you know, particularly the long running ones and the really successful ones, at least artistically even, you know, you're just sort of like, I don't know how that happens, but sometimes the things just the forces just kind of align, which is great, you know. So, I mean, in terms of the process, I mean, you're right, there's two writers on a book, which isn't typical. So, I mean, what's the process? I mean, I've worked on some where writers will alternate, you know, issues, or are you guys just like totally jamming, collabing like every month? Like how, how, how are you guys working that out? I, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll start this one and then you can say what you think about how the process sure. has evolved, Scott. But we, we started, well, so the, so the development process was very much like a, you know, like a two person writing room where we just, for a long time, we just kicked around, what should it be? What should it be? How should we do it? How should we implement these ideas? And, and we co-wrote the first issue, um, and 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 the second which which worked which worked well although the the thing was it we came to a place where like um i mean so so the so way that process worked is we we both like came up with an outline and we talked about it and we talked about it from from the level of the arc and we talked about it from the level of the characters and the issue and all those things but like the the truth is you never really know what you're doing in a book until you start doing the book and and that is something we definitely saw to a degree on undiscovered country because you know, I, I would say, and Scott, you may disagree, but I feel like it was it was probably into issue three before it really all clicked about the way that we were gonna, like all of the things that we know now, it took us a while to get there, which is not uncommon. And I don't think it's uncommon in the art either. Um, but what we what we realized was that the, the process of finding that was making it difficult to call issues finished. And so we, we came up with the idea of alternating issues so that, you know, I would write one, Scott would write one, we would each, like, each issue would have, like, a lead writer, so that that lead writer could be like, okay, the issue's finished now, we need to send it. Um, and that, I think, is, has been um, really successful, because it's, 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 I mean, not that we didn't trust each other before, but it's like, okay, man, this is your issue, you're going to get it done, you're going to write it out, and it's going to be great. And I think that, that one little tweak saying, like, when, when one of the two writers says it's done, it's done, has, has really helped the process move much more smoothly and quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's kind of how we do. It. We just take turns. We always talk about everything. We always throw it, all the ideas back and forth. We read everything, um, but each issue has one lead writer, and that's pretty much it. So, right. We had a lot. Of, it gives us a chance. I mean, you know, one of the things that I think all of us love about comics, and I came over from books because of this. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to do comics, but I mean, the reason that it's kept me is the collaborative aspect of it, and getting to do stuff with friends, getting to do stuff where 
you know, you can hand something you care about to somebody else and then they elevate it and they make it better than you could in their own way and they add to it. And, you know, it's that weird kind of strange recombinant uh, process where you make something together that's just better than you could do alone and just different. So for me too, I think one of the things was um, once we started doing what Charles was saying and we, we split it up, it also gave us a chance just to be like, to give you a window into our process. We, we live um, about three hours apart or we, you know, roughly depending on, on where we are, like where we're staying and stuff. But we would started meeting at this town in between Mm -hmm. uh, at this bookstore and it gave us a great chance to kind of get together whiteboard it and so um what we do is we break the whole arc really distinctly so for the our, our up one of the upcoming arcs charles just we went over it and then charles kind of wrote the breakdown for that one and so we know what's going to happen pretty much every issue so it's not a matter of like you know issue nine i write and then charles is surprised by what happens it's much yeah. more we have the whole thing planned out and we do, for a series this size, we've tried to really be um, uh, very uh, architectural with it. And we do know, for example, the ending uh, mm -hmm. that's going to happen, hopefully, all the way out at issue 50. You know, mm -hmm. with a series this size, too, a lot of the time what you do is you leave leaves in the table in the middle. So as long as you guys keep buying it and you're excited, we want to go that far and go through this many biomes and different zones and these things. But because it's about things that matter to us, we know how it's going to end. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that there's an architecture that we really decide on together before we start going to the yeah. issue. So there are little That's surprises, right. like I'll read something and see the kind of emotional weight that Charles gave a scene between two characters or how he tweaked it so that there's this great element or detail. And, it, you know, that's the kind of stuff that's just a wonderful mm -hmm. It's just been a great, you know, a great blessing with it where we're both big planners. Like we both, none of it, it's not like fly by the seat of your pants and we don't know what's going to happen next arc. It's not like that at all. It's sure. very much like, we know what's going to happen in the arc. We know what's going to happen in the issue, but we give each other the freedom to tell it our own way, you know? Yeah, and that's true. I mean, Kamo was, you seem pretty involved at a fairly early level. I mean, or early stage, I should say. You know, a lot of times I worked on books where the writer and the artist there's this back and forth but you know most of the time the scripts are kind of coming fully formed and you know the artist is doing it and you're trusting the writer to deliver what you're expecting to deliver but you seem to be very like intimately involved in the process of sort of you know all of this stuff i mean do you feel like that's true i mean do you feel like what your biggest contribution at that point is uh, well, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not the one who should answer this question, but I feel, I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm deeply involved in it. I mean, like uh, I, I love, you know, all the, the the characters that they 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 pulled out so far, and 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 and, and it's the fun part is to design, come up with some design for faces or creatures or vehicles or whatever surrounding that. A um, everyone loves because like like scott said it's, it's a teamwork we all have to, to be happy about what we're doing so uh, and I, i've always been doing this i mean uh, but it, it's honestly it's the it's the funniest part i mean coming up with the design designing and there, there's really a lot of things here to design and that's also part of the of the of the reason why i decided to take this challenge in fact i kind of remember charles when you first approached me that you told me that you should have been like a mini series that you had thought about doing like a mini series but then yeah. as soon as you worked on it you realized that you had too much good material to write about you know you know exploring all of american of america mm -hmm. that you know that eventually expanded into what it is today and and i was like yeah i'm in i mean and and, and i cannot wait until uh, i get to the next you know uh, scenario to see what what uh, what uh, i have to design and uh, it, it's fantastic honestly and also i think that well I actually found out about this when we did the panel at new york comic con last year and there was a reason also that, that the reason also why you you chose me was that i was not american and and you know that yeah. honored me uh, but it, it also makes uh, a great sense because like uh, i've been coming to the united states you know working for america american publishers since the, the year 2000 you know was going back and forth and my point of view my perception of america and american culture and the, the way of life it's completely different you know not living there so it also makes a great sense to have like another view when it comes down to tell a story this big i think mm -hmm. yeah should we show some of the the art i mean we we have some of comments screen sharing here hopefully i won't you know shut this off somehow but yeah i mean i think that the team in general is really clicking i mean some of it is probably just the sense of you know, all where everyone's at at their career. I mean, I would say most series don't really start to connect, you know, 
come together till I always have argued it's like at least the second arc when things really start to click. Like if you look at any kind of real seminal series that runs a long time, it's usually somewhere in issue like six to 12 where you really see that issue that's like, oh, all right, I, you know, things really start to coalesce, you know? So, I mean, I feel like you guys are obviously ahead of that curve, which is great. Uh, so let's see. So we're going to share the screen here and try to. Um, hopefully yeah. And also, can I just add one quick thing, which is we were really lucky to also get along with our extremely talented colorist and letter, yeah. but oh, Matt yeah. Wilson, we were incredibly lucky to get Matt as in as a colorist and he's worked with both of us in different um, capacities over the years. So again, somebody that we trust to do things with the series that will uh, surprise and elevate and all of that stuff. And also Crank too, the letter has been- yeah, Chris Crank, he's amazing. Chris Crank has been a really big part of the team. And, and uh, yeah, so we're very lucky to have like such a great, a great, uh, tribe on this one for yeah sure. I mean, I was, you know and daniele orlandini who who inked um oh, camo right. over issues one yeah. through four and then leo grassi who's been doing right. three, three, sorry five for and six and moving into issue seven yeah or, sorry into the second arc and of course the the sort of curmudgeonly linchpin to the whole thing which is will dennis you know who's yeah. been there you, go. you know yeah. dealing with <laughs> with rustling us in a way that doesn't make us feel like the jerks we are it's been he's been it's, it's can't be be clear, like just so while you're getting your your windows can i get um, full screen i can go to full screen enter full screen I, they won't be able to see you right but they'll be able to see the art maybe yeah okay, let's find out yeah there you go nice. oh they can still see us that's perfect yeah we're still there sweet okay well there's the first cover of the trade which as i said is available on july 8th um in all your finest comic shops so mm -hmm. that's a nice so 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 while that's up Kamo, you did this cover, so um, I know yep. you're all pretty proud of it. We thought it was pretty powerful. So good. A lot of iterations to get to it, but um, I don't know. What, when you're looking at it now, like after a year plus or more, what, what, what's your feeling about it? Yeah, I, I, st I still love it. Uh, and I'm so glad that we decided to go with this version. This was also actually the cover for issue one. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I uh, actually told the story about how it came to me. Uh, I was uh, at the dentist and I was sitting upside down because my chair was like, you know, going up and I was looking at the world map and it was like an upside down world map. So I was seeing at the, at the world map from the right perspective. So I thought it would have been like a cool idea to just show like there was something wrong in America by, by just by showing the map upside down, you know, this is something off. There's something off in here. But then you know, uh, talk, going back and forth with, with you, Scott and Charles, we decided that maybe, you know, because also I had the idea of like using like a huge black spot where America was, you know, kind of like the black box, you know, the mm -hmm. black cloud shielding of all of communications. And then, you know, going through a few iterations, we decided to just uh, erase America and, and basically use this, this white spot and, and that, that meaning that there's no communication at all that can go either in or out of the of the country, and I I feel it's so powerful still till today, and um, yeah, we, we we tried the different versions with the names of the states, but that, you know in the end you know it's pretty it's pretty safe to assume that this is like uh, North America. So I still love it. I still love it, and uh, and so far I think everyone that that saw it you know was uh, was feeling really really hit by it. Oh. Yeah, the, the absence of the country, you know, really is reflective of the absence of the country in the story, you know, until we can discover it. I mean, I do feel like even as you work on this, it's interesting. I feel like we're kind of all discovering this stuff as we go along, like even in terms, you know, I haven't really had that experience in a lot of the other books I've worked on, you know, just maybe the narrative structure of this makes it feel that way, but mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. So, all right, so that's the first cover, also the trade cover for the comic shop version and bookstore version but then we have another one here um so we're doing an exclusive at barnes and noble uh yeah. and so that's this cover which was a promotional image that we <clears throat> sort of you know you sort of jammed on camo and came up with uh you know took a few different things that we've been working on and put it together with matt wilson's help again yeah, this this was originally the the promo poster that we did for San Diego last year uh, mm -hmm. that didn't feature the helicopter, but uh, only had the, the opening gates and uh, you know the American flag behind them, 
right. kind of like uh, an ominous take on, you know, you know, one of the inspirations for this piece was the Island of the Dead by Buckley, you know, the, the famous painting, you know, mm -hmm. that, that um, should, uh, you know, should somehow, you know, uh, worry you because there's uh, there, there's something weird going on in here and but at, at the same time it, it symbolizes the gates of America opening to the first expedition that reaches for the first time in years from uh, from the outer world and uh, and then I did a cover for the fourth printing of issue one which featured some some skulls on poles and like the helicopter behind kind of like uh, um, Apocalypse Now vibes, and then when we decided to do the cover for Barnes and Nobles, we tried to put these two elements together. And Matt Wilson, you know, called painted this beautiful red sky, you know, behind, and it, boom, it was uh, brilliant. You know, I, I will say just looking at this, like I have always thought that Matt Wilson colors the best skies in all of comics. Like his sky painting is is out of this world. The way he handles light, it's just incredible. And this is a very good example of that. Like the, you know, the sunset ominous red clouds like that. I mean, that's all, I know we talked about doing that, but Camo, that's like the red background is pretty much Matt's choices, right? Like he, he brought that to it, right? Uh, well, yeah, I think uh, I gave him the, the I gave him as an example, the cover for issue uh, one for printing, which he colored, yeah. it was like the red sky with the, with yeah. the big uh, yellow sun on the apocalypse now, but then he completely repainted it. And, and it's so out of this world, even, you know, if you just pay attention to the pinks that he uses over the cliffs and the water, that's so, so, so beautiful. Yeah, and on the cliffs, just the, yeah. the shiny, beautiful yeah. highlights on that. Uh, he's brilliant. If you follow Matt on Instagram, he's quite an adventurer, like him and his wife. Like, they're always traveling all over the country. He lives down south. Like, they're all over the place. And he'll, uh, he takes these amazing photos, and he has a drone that he takes a lot of yeah. videos and photos with. And every once in a while, he'll mention, like, oh, you know, got, got some more sky inspiration that I can't wait to use or something, you know? So he must really yeah. kind of pull out. I was, I was yeah. so happy when we got him because this is, you know, this is a book about America and America in many ways is about like sort of the big, broad, wide open spaces in the West. And um, that when you think of America, many people think of those, those ideas, like the wide Great Plains, the mountain ranges, you know, all of that. And, and I knew that Matt would be able to nail all that stuff and give it give it that realistic feel so yeah anyway. yeah we, we we realized that as soon as the first pages for issue one turned in i mean like yeah true the, true yeah environment and canyons and uh, and all the thing well brilliantly came to life yeah so all right so well so we're talking we've we've kind of talked a lot about the process where we're at with the thing um we we should probably you know looking forward we're about to start the second arc well we've started the second arc but the second arc is about to come out. Uh, I think it's July 29th, the issue seven, which will be part one of the new, you know, the second story arc. Um, why don't we talk a little about that? Like where, you know, where we ended and, you know, as these characters sort of move through the country, like what's the, what's the high concept behind arc number two, which is. Why don't you, why don't you start sure. Scott, and right, kick yeah. it over to me when you're ready. Yeah, sure. Well, what I'd say, just in case, sometimes I know people check out these panels and uh, they're not totally familiar with the book being discussed or that stuff. So if you haven't picked up Undiscovered Country yet, we kind of gave you the log line already that it's essentially about this team of people that's invited into an America that's been closed off from the rest of the world for 30 years to discover what's there. And the reason they're invited in is because this uh, pandemic called the Sky Virus is kind of ravaging um, the entire globe. Uh, and there's a promise of a cure possibly being inside the United States. So it's real sort of propulsive quality. And what we wanted to do with the two, the first zone that they find themselves in when they land is nothing like the shining city that's promised to them and the message that first invited them in. It's wild and it's over the top and they're terrestrial fish monsters and repurposed space vehicles and this kind of big villainous character sort of rules over this initial land that's called Destiny. His name is the Destiny Man. He's this like very tall, almost inhumanly tall uh, 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 figure wearing a black astronaut's costume. He seems to have like animal, an animal claw and he's got big neon horns that come out of the, the astronaut helmet. Um, and they barely escape with their lives uh, uh, as they try and get out of that zone and find their way out of the country. And so Without spoiling too much, the first arc, which is in the first um, volume, 
and we're trying to, we, we wanted the volume to come out without an issue that month. So when the, when the first uh, book comes out July 8th, that will be like Undiscovered Country for July. Mm -hmm. And then, or for most of July. And then three weeks later, we have um, issue seven, which begins the next arc. Um, but the first zone was kind of over the top, um, almost like wild, uh, uh, yeah, crazy creatures. And yeah, again, like uh, armies of, of pink Cadillacs pulled by, you know, monster, uh, by fish things. And so it was really uh, almost like a cacophony of, of like of crazy, where you see how America is nothing like what was promised. Mm -hmm. The other thing you start to discover is the people on the team pictured here, uh, but not zombified like this in the first arc, um, mm -hmm. the people on the team all have different reasons for being invited. And they all have backstories that are sort of complicated and, and secret. And the main characters, Charlotte and Daniel, are a brother and sister. She's an epidemiologist trying to find a cure for the virus. And he's a mercenary. Uh, both of them, uh, had, their parents were part of a think tank uh, that was seemed to be heavily involved in the decisions to close the country 30 years ago. And so they were, their parents had them leave the country just a few nights before the sealing of the, of America back when they were children. They don't really know why. And so part of the mystery of the series is what happened and why they were sent out and what their parents' relationship is to all of this. So the first arc really focuses on that. It's an introduction to everything. Um, and the second arc, one of, the only thing I'll say, and then I'll let Charles talk is that Basically, one of the things when they when they get into the country, they meet this figure, Dr. Sam uh, Elgin, who calls himself Uncle Sam. And what he tells them is that the myth of this place is that the team that lands here is supposed to walk the spiral, which is this almost this pathway through this new transformed country and through the 13 different zones that are almost like separate countries, separate territories, separate biomes with who knows what in each one mm -hmm. to get to the center and find the, the shining city at the middle and save the world. So um, while we wanted this one to be kind of Western, out there, uh, you know, almost uh, out of control, the next zone is wildly different. And so issue seven that starts the next arc begins with them getting into the, uh, into the next zone as well. Is that good? Is that enough, Charles? Yeah, that's, that's great. Um, that's more than, I mean, not more than enough, it's perfect. Uh, so, so the second arc is called Unity and, and that is the name of the second zone and as Scott su just suggested there are there are 13 zones inside this new transformed America and they're going to have to go through all of them and see what's in all of them before they can eventually make it to the middle and so we wanted just from an artistic and creative perspective to have the second zone feel just radically different in every way from from the genre influence to the way that it felt to the characters to the to the the people they'll encounter you know all of it and so so while the the first one was all about kind of you know, survival of the fittest and, and live free or die and, and you know, kind of an anarchic view of, of what America makes America great. Um, this, this zone is much more focused on American technology and innovation and how uh, technology and, and progress um, and, and America pulling together in sort of, in terms of inventiveness have, have enabled it to succeed in the past. And so this is a zone that is exploring that concept within America. And so there's a lot of you know, around, I mean, we'll see when we look at issue, the cover to issue eight in a second, but when they're through, through the arc, there's all these, um, or through the zone rather, there are all these gigantic, like massive, massive skyscraper sized monuments to different American inventions. So whether that's the Wright Brothers airplane or the atomic bomb or the iPod or like any of these things, um, this is, this is a zone that believes that the way forward is basically by, you know, capitalizing on our ability to, to come up with technological solutions to our problems, which you know, it's kind of an all or nothing uh, proposition. And, and clearly that is not the only way to solve problems. And, and that is starting to, you know, that is starting to explore the larger theme of the book, which is that it, it really shouldn't be an all or nothing thing in America. And, and there really isn't only one way forward. There have to be a lot of ways forward. Right. Um, but and the, you know, the tone here is like, I don't want to spoil too much about what it looks like, but it's very, it's very stark. Like TH, uh, THX 1138 was a big influence. Um, you know, Apple stores were kind of an influence. Like it's, it's just, it feels very kind of locked down and sculpted and constructed in a way that the first zone didn't. Um, and there's a lot of, uh, there's horror elements in it. There's science fiction elements in it. And, and it's really just a blast to, to write and think about. Um, and and I, I think for Kamo, it's been a blast to, to draw. So that's where I was going to go next. Like Kamo, what are, you know, how do you feel as we're throwing all these completely new concepts at you and all the stuff you designed for arc one is now out the window? 
Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, part of the fun of like working on this book is like to have to do stuff that's all the time completely new from from you know colony to colony, from story arc to story arc. I mean, and you know, I, I loved working on the first story arc, uh, but um, I'm enjoying a lot doing this one. And like, as I said, I I'm I'm always I, I already know some of the stuff that's uh, that's that are coming uh, you know my way you know for the future story arcs, but. The moment I'll do it is the moment that the, 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 the pure fun begins in terms of like designing characters and, and visualize background, like working on the monuments, for example, it's been fantastic, mm -hmm. you know, like, and, uh, and, uh, and, and also, you know, on, the, on, on a third step, like actually doing these things on the pages, first on the cover design and then, you know, interiors. And it's, uh, and it's so fun to see how our cast will interact with every different scenario. So this is the call for issue eight. Yeah, so that was the cover for seven, and then now this is the one for issue eight, which you know you started to explain some of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all you can see. Like the atomic bomb is there. That's you know, um, you know, either fat man or little boy. You've got the the lunar lander up there on the ridge. You've got a, a like a Wi-Fi server. You've got um, you know the Wright brothers playing. Like all of these things will be part of, you know, not maybe not specifically. I don't know if we're gonna do a, a story about the atomic bomb, but it's like these are these are things that have given America a sense of identity and purpose over its over its history and you know for good and for ill like are the you know not all those things are positive things that you see on the cover so um you know it's a really it's it's a really neat thing to think about and and one of the great things about this book in general is that whenever we th whenever we come up with one of these sort of basic ideas oh, okay it's a zone about this then we start to see all of the um the underlying story possibilities that that, that gives us and it's just a it is just an endless blast to work on these things. And I think of all the cool new zones we have in the future to explore, it's all have their own vibes and different things going on. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it definitely, there's a lot of characters to juggle. There's a lot of these big ideas and, you know, then the, the real world starts to reflect some of this stuff and it, it gets to be very, um, you know, pretty intense just even being a part of this. So that's the cover to eight. Um, anything else you want to say about that combo? I think you kind of covered it, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it was uh, it was lovely to to work on this, and uh, I, I really love the idea of like the, these uh, inventions turned into monuments for this uh, for this mm -hmm. territory. You, and as you can see, there is something you know wrong with these uh, monuments because all of these tendrils, white tendrils that, that you know delve into the ground, right? You know, there, there's some red in it, and you know, same as in the previous cover, there were some red you know on the cables that that, that, that were coming out of their heads. You know, there's. There's something ominous and there's something sinister about this um, this area that you know we wanted to make to put it those in those concepts on the cover right away. So it might yeah. be more subtle, but I mean it's there. And uh, no, it's definitely <laughs> the figure still yeah. like only real solid blacks on the page being though you know like what's why are they sort of shrouded? What's the the real mystery there? I mean well, even. I, the approach seems more organic almost than the earlier covers, you know, were sort of felt a little more graphic design kind of heavy, whereas this feels much more, I don't know if it's Mobius inspired or more sort of, you know, there's got that feel to it, that kind of open line, organic sci-fi feel to it, you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, every, every uh, issue and every story arc brings its own challenges, you know, and I try to, you know, react and adapt to these challenges. And I guess somehow this reflects in the covers as well. It's not a fully, you know, uh, coherent and, and uh, um, organic process to me. Sometimes I just react and sometimes I just have an idea and I try to do it, but there, I don't process it too much. Yeah. You know, with, the, with our figures, uh, the, the characters being black, I just, I, I wanted to uh, put like a graphic element and also wanted to kind of put them into the shapes of these legs, these giant legs that are, you know, basically one of the, the legs of the, of the Tesla, um, what is it like the, the uh, the, 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 the kind of like tripods, I, I can't remember the name right now, but um, is it like the, the Tesla thing? Well, I mean, I, I wanted them to be kind of like uh, um, shadowed by, by the, the and also, you know, sell the size of this, of this monument. So, mm -hmm. and also the fact that I, since the first issue, the, um, the one that we showed uh, uh, earlier, I wanted to use only white, red and, bla uh, and blue and, and black, of course, uh, for, for this cover. So, you know, and, and you know, most of the times I, I managed to do it. Yeah. No, I think it, it, for sure you do, you know? Oh, here we're gonna see this thing. So then for issue seven, we have a variant cover by Charlie Adler, which is oh, yeah. the artist of so uh, Walking Dead. Um, 
and here we'll pull this up there it is oh oh sorry it's like a big file maybe it's uh <laughs> he sent me a tiff that's like gigantic let me see if i can uh, get it smaller um yes <clears throat> charlie you know it's tricky with the variant covers because charlie you know like we're sort of developing stuff and in the timeline that you in the timeline that you do material you know you don't always know like should it reflect the issue should it just be sort of a general you know general thing um let me see if i can get this full screen oh i don't know what we're doing here sorry uh no, i don't know why it won't it's not coming up bigger but um well there it is you get an idea yeah so, um, but yeah, I mean, this is just it's like super cool. I mean, even like the cross right in the middle, that's sort of, you know, mm -hmm. it and the reflection. I mean, there's, there's at least one, two, he's got four or five layers, you know, working on there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's realistic, but it's also graphic and symbolic, like, you know, it's just cool. Yeah, Charlie. That is, that is the Destiny Man, by the way. That's the, the, the villain that Scott was talking about before. That, that is one of the primary antagonists of the first arc uh and and you know I, I don't think this is a huge spoiler to say we'll be we'll be part of the book going forward too which is really cool so right and, yeah, and, and as an artist it's been a blessing to see all these terrific creators working on these variant covers i mean it's, mm -hmm. it's like, most of them are my friends but you know like every every new cover brings such joy to me you know on, on a sheer fan point of view and uh, it's, it's mm -hmm. just so great to have these variants yeah no it's been great i mean we've gotten so many right from the first issue there were so many and People just seem excited, and inspired by it. And, you know, there's definitely, there's so much relevance to the real world. I mean, we've been constant, we, you guys have really consciously tried to, to make it more timeless, even if there's things that reflect on the real world. Do you guys think that, I mean, Scott, do you find that to be like a struggle? Like, it seemed like it would be, it'd be very easy to sort of just be constantly commenting on, you know, what's going on in America or what's going on the world i mean how do you how do you balance that yeah i mean that's a great question i think for us you know we were always uh it was always built out of a kind of anxiety and hope in the air at that moment about what was happening here um and it, i think one of the things that surprised us was how certain aspects of it between the pandemic or the border walls or the things that were developed a long time ago when we were talking about the series that kind of popped up in the news at different moments so we get a lot of comments from people saying, oh, the world of undiscovered country is coming true in different ways. But for us, I think that those things are, are almost more incidental than the, than the thing that I think we, we both feel is most timely about it, you know, which is it's a series built around, at the end of the day, the dangers of isolationism on every level. So it's, it's about how, how destructive and how kind of monstrous things become uh, in these different environments with different ideas that might even be noble at times when they're isolated from one another, when people are isolated from one another um, and, you know, don't have to sort of um, think of themselves as one collective when they can kind of throw collectivism out the window and be like, I can wrap myself in my own ideologies and, and have all the means to make that my reality. And in that way, it's, it's extremely, in our opinion, un-American, you know, that idea of breaking apart from breaking up bridges breaking apart from each other to kind of create entirely um isolated and alienated almost sort of fictitious uh uh territories to live in of your own making that are totally subjective in that regard as opposed to dealing with for both you know from new york that idea of having to deal with everybody that you share this space with and figuring out a way to live together and often because of your differences because of your your different backgrounds, all of it, reaching higher and making something that, again, like a comic, that's better together than it could be alone. So in that way, so many of the loudest voices right now here, certainly in America with Trump, but around the world, are advocating this kind of retreat from a global stage and a retreat personally, too, from any kind of objective truth, all of this stuff into these different fantasies and, and that. That for us, that's the big, I think, driving message of the series and a kind of thing that that allows us to feel like we can make it ridiculous at times and lunatic in its, in its kind of storytelling because at the end of the day, it's got a very honest, sincere heart. Right. You know? Right. Does that make sense? You know what I mean? <clears throat> totally it does. But yeah, it's definitely a high wire act that you guys are sort of performing because you want stuff that's going to be 
relevant, but also something in years to come that people will want to still be reading. You know, I think some 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 creators fall into this trap of trying to be too timely. And, you know, I understand that temptation, but it's also like if you can feel dated, like almost immediately, you know, so it's that's definitely a juggling act. Um, so I, we, we don't want to run too long here. We're getting sort of towards the end. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to say about that? Charles, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I just, Scott and I were just having this conversation yesterday, the day before about um, literally how do we, how do we continue to make the book relevant, but also accessible and also timeless? And how do we not, you know, there, there are things that, that Scott and I and Kamo and, and you and like everyone on the team very, has very firm beliefs about everything you can think of with respect to America. Like we all have our, have our stands that we take, but mm -hmm. we also think that this is supposed to be a book that is commenting not about this moment in America, but about all of America. And those are different things. And so we want it to be something that reflects America 10 years from now and 20 years from now in sort of the same way. And it is, uh, it is not easy to do. We, we definitely have had story ideas that we've kicked around and thrown back. Um, but, it's it's we're, we're finding that the way to walk between the raindrops in a way that is it is really challenging um especially because there are things like we kind of maybe want to talk about and put into the book and things like that but we all, we've recognized that we have achieved something unique and special here and we we don't want to like sure well and we talk about them i think just to be clear like it's not that we don't go into the stuff that we think is timely or something happening in the news or those kinds of things it's more that it gets translated into the kind of lexicon of comic book lunacy so mm -hmm. that it's like it appears it like you know the zones they travel through have corollaries in the real world in different ways and you know ideas about sort of you know everything from oppressive systems co-opting things culture all of that stuff is there but it would be like you know with a giant monstrous blue toad with wings because of blah 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 so that it's not so they're not the things that we're exploring and sometimes we're figuring out as we go to our feelings about things and other times we have extremely like charles said very firm and set beliefs about certain things we're trying to do it in a way where it doesn't feel um you know didactic or it doesn't feel too uh it doesn't it doesn't it uses this kind of crazy palette and environment to to speak to those the way that i think we like to do in superhero comics as well and Star Wars, all the stuff that we've done and the series that we gravitate towards are timely and relevant and do approach things in a way that I think uh, uses the real world as a, as a kind of corollary for what they're doing in the book, but they do it translated to such a degree that you're just sort of think you're swept away having fun. Sure. And then you realize as it goes that it's more, it has more layers than that. And that's for this series, we felt that anything other than that would kind of sink it. Mm -hmm. If it, you know, if it was too, if it was almost, we wanted to have something that felt immediately like, you know, the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon as a kid or that kind mm -hmm. of thing where you transport it away. Mm -hmm. And yet as you go, you start to realize that it, it's, quite, uh, it's quite resonant, hopefully, yeah. about the things happening in the world. And I think that's the best sort of speculative science fiction stuff does that too, you know, I mean, it really is able, it allows you to comment on things in some framework that doesn't feel so preachy or didactic. I mean, Kamo, do you, do you feel like you have struggles at all sort of being an outsider or do you feel, I mean, I feel like personally that's been a benefit to the team that you, you can come at it from this angle of like this idea of America as opposed to the boots on the ground realities of America. Yeah, I feel the same way. I think mm -hmm. uh, I can, somehow forcefully have like a more neutral approach towards America, but at the same time, America has its own mythology for me, which might not be the same for you guys. You know, I remember one of my first trips when I saw the Uber Dam for the first time, I said, damn, I thought that that was like a, pr a pretty impressive piece of, uh, of architecture, you know, and it probably is for everyone. But it's, it's, uh, I, I guess it's great to have someone like me who, who's not American, but has come to America a lot of times and, and, and has a lot of friends and ideas about America. And, and give my feedback to, to the series, not only visually, but about, you know, stuff that happens on the book. And, and, and that's also one of the reasons why I'm missing, you know, the fact that we won't be together, you know, we should have been together in the, in the yeah. stuff. And right. the comic. Well, did, it, did we even talk about the Eisner? Well, I was I, gonna, I, oh, we didn't, I yeah. 
smooth transition, but if you want to just blow it out, like, yeah, blow it out. Yeah, I actually well, wanted I mean, to uh, it's... mention the movie, but uh, you know, we also have a movie, you know, that, that <laughs> has to come out with the, from the book. But, <laughs> yeah, you... we got the, for the Eisner. It's the... first time for me, so thank you. thank you guys. Thanks again for having me in the book, because this made my, my year. Honestly. Is, is it really the first time, Kamal? Yeah. Wow. So yeah, go ahead, Charles. You want to continue briefly, give us the Eisner and maybe like a little media movie recap? Yeah, sorry, you guys were, were uh, lagging a little bit. Were you asking me to do the, the, the you, movie do recap? Do you want to talk about the movie or the Eisner and we'll flip them? Um, well, I will say it's also my first Eisner nominations, which is really exciting. So I, I, I am wow. sad that we cannot be together at that, at that dinner and all that, but I, I am hopeful and um, regardless of what happens, I'm very grateful for it. It's a, it's a, it's a really cool thing to have this book that we all care about so much recognized that way, especially at this moment in time. But anyway, some movie stuff. Um, yeah, so, so the, the, the story, the entire story was optioned for development as a film by New Republic Pictures, who most recently had 1917 out, but lots of other great movies, Black Swan, Rocket Man, many cool flicks. And um, so they, they are developing the, the, the whole series as, as ideally a trilogy of films. And Scott and I are, are thrilled to be able to, to write the screenplay for the, for the first movie. So we're working on that hard now. It is, it is definitely a challenge to take you know, a 50 issue planned series and adapt it into to films. It's just a really interesting challenge, but we're, we're, we've been working very hard on it. And I think that process is interesting. If you want to speak to that for a minute, Scott, I don't know, like if people care about process anymore, but. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're yeah. just hoping people want an eight hour movie at this point. <laughs> No, it's a, uh, it's been, a, it's a blast. I mean, I think the process, one of the benefits of it was that it made us really think about upcoming arcs and what we, if we were only going to get a chance to tell this, um, this kind of compressor, but this first section uh, uh, of the story of this epic story for the first film, what would we want to include and where would we want to end? And so it made us really kind of sift through a lot of the things we had been thinking about doing for uh, arcs in the comic. Um, subsequently over arc three, arc four, arc five, and wondering, well, should we pull some of those in? And I think at the end of the day, the two things that it did was it made us a lot more confident about some of our initial decision making about why the series is structured the way it is. Mm -hmm. And it also allowed us to flip some things. So for example, not to give too much away, but like while the, the book, it's important to introduce you to the characters in a way where they're kind of exploring together zone by zone at first, so that you, you have this kind of, um, this immersive feeling with all of them where you get to know them as they get to know the land. With the film, the economy of it demands like a different approach. So the characters, you meet them, you see them put together on this team and they're actually split up um, when the helicopter crashes. So you see them, they wind up in two different zones and have to reunite to make it to a third. So in that regard, it made us really think through a lot of the things coming to have to kind of make one big comprehensive story and then also hint at all the things coming, assuming the first one goes well, that people will want a second and a third movie like Hunger Games or that kind of, that kind of a, you know, divergent, that kind of a thing. Um, so it was, it's been a blast and I think it's only made, it's only made this aspect of the storytelling for print stronger because it's, it really has made us kick the tires on a lot of decisions that we made and a lot of, mm -hmm. and made us figure out a lot of things coming up faster than I think we would have had to otherwise. And that's right. I yeah, agree. so it's fun. I mean, it's, you know, who knows, as long as we get to play giant fish monsters with people riding those things or whatever in the film, I'm happy. Right into the premiere. All right, so the, the, all right, so we better probably wrap it up. The only thing we didn't get through here yet, we have a little merch coming out starting, um, starting it's going to be the end of August. So let's just see if we can get that up here. And then we're, yeah, here we are. So it's this t-shirt you can see. It's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty graphic, pretty impressive. Uh, the first cover and it's got the logo in the back. I think that's available. I want to say August 26th. So if you're doing orders from your shop or whatever, um, you know, check it out. It seems pretty. And we're going to have the website. We're going to be adding to the right. Do you want to speak to that yeah. a little bit, Charles? Or because it's something that we're we've been talking about for a long time, and we're we want to make it something that we're we're active on. Yeah. So so we um we've been building a website for the book, um, which uh, is just at theundiscovered.country. So it's it's theundiscovered.country is the website, and it's it is going to be a place where we will we will be posting a lot of behind the scenes stuff, previews, um, you know, discussions that that we have, links to links to articles and interviews with us. Um, 
And, and ideally, it'll be a place where people can talk about the book and ask us questions and interact with us in a more direct way. Like now that we're all seeing kind of the way this, the Zoom technology works and so on, like this video conferencing, like I could see us easily doing things where like we'll have fan meetups and just stuff like that. So basically, we, we, we wanted to present a place where people will be able to get everything from signed copies of the issues to t-shirts to just looks at what's coming up and looks at behind the scenes of what we've already done. And it's a work in progress. It's still a little new, but that's all at the be undiscovered, be undiscovered dot country. So check it out. Awesome. All right. Um, well, any final words you guys want to say? I would just say to the readers and the fans who've supported us so far, thank you so much. And anybody watching this, I'm sorry that we couldn't be there at San Diego. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, hopefully next year things will be better and we can all be together. But I don't know if you guys have any last parting words and then we'll sign off this thing. Just thank you and wish us luck on the Eisner. Yeah, right. Exactly. Kamo, are you good? Yeah, grazie. Uh, that's all I can say. I mean, it's uh, thank you in Italian. That's pretty common. But, you know, it's been a blast. And thanks for having uh, me on the book. And you guys are great. Uh, and um, I'm looking forward to see all of you guys the first uh, occasion that we have. Exactly. Yeah, first time we can. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Thank you all. See you later. Take care.